Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to today's Live Zoo to You. My name is Katie, I'm an educator here at the Stone Zoo and today we are joined by one of our noisiest and smelliest exhibits here at the Stone Zoo, the flamingos. So if you have any flamingo questions through the course of our chat today, please feel free to type them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them as we chat. But our flamingos are kind of like our unofficial zoo greeters, right? When you walk in the stone zoo, you can probably hear them, maybe even see a flash of bright pink. And on a hot summer day, you might even smell them too. We have 48 flamingos here. And the species of flamingos that we have here at Stone Zoo are American flamingos. They're also called Caribbean flamingos. So they have two different common names, but they are in fact the same species. And there are six different species of flamingo. This just happens to be one of the largest. So as you're looking at our flamingos, you might notice, especially if you're here in person, that they have some different bands or bracelets on their legs. A lot of people ask us what those bracelets are or how to tell if a flamingo is a male or female. So our male flamingos will have a green band on their leg. Females will have a yellow band. All of those bands are numbered and that's how we can tell individual flamingos apart as well. That's really important when we talk about animal health and wellness here at the zoo, making sure that we know each individual separately and that they are healthy and doing really great here at the zoo. So a lot of people also notice that flamingos will spend a lot of time standing on one leg. We can see that there are two males right up front here with those green bands standing on one leg. And a lot of people will ask, ask why their legs bend backwards. And this is one of my favorite flamingo facts. So if you're at a party, this is the, your go-to fact to really wow the other party goers. So that is, it looks a lot like a flamingo's knee. That's usually where human knees are located on our legs, we're about halfway down. What you're looking at that looks like it's bending backwards is actually the flamingo's ankle. Their knees are up really high under all those feathers. So they do have knees, they do have ankles, they're just located a little bit differently um, on their legs than they are with humans. So if you look at those flamingo feet, they're really standing on tiptoes. So they have tiptoes with webbed feet. Having webbed feet is a trait you'll see of many aquatic and semi-aquatic animals. And that's to help them wade through and glide through the water just like us when we put flippers on our feet. Now, another very common question we get here at the zoo are, are those baby flamingos? Or sometimes a statement of, oh my goodness, look at the tiny baby flamingos. So I always like to take the opportunity to point out the fact that this is a mixed species exhibit. And what we're looking at right now look a lot like little tiny baby flamingos, but it's actually a entirely different species. Those birds, we have four of them. They're called scarlet ibises. And scarlet ibis have the same coloration of flamingos, that bright, corally pink color, but they are an entirely separate species. They just look like tiny little babies. Um, but this is a full-grown size for a um, scarlet ibis. So you might see them perched up in the trees. Sometimes you might even see them walking amongst the flamingos. I think we have one right back here. So sometimes it's fun to spot in the very back there the ibis amongst all of the flamingos. So as we're getting ready here um, for a possibly stormy afternoon in Massachusetts, I want to talk a little bit about flamingos and how we keep them safe at the zoo during inclement weather. That's a really common guest question. People will come and visit on colder days. They'll come and visit us in the winter. We are open year round and ask why we have flamingos out in the cold. This is one of my favorite things to talk about with flamingos. Flamingos and other birds that spend a lot of their time in the water, like cranes and swans and ducks, 
have a really cool adaptation called counter current heat exchange. So if we're looking at those really long, skinny flamingo legs, the blood in their legs is going to get cold really easily. They don't have feathers to, oh, a little flamingo um, tough, tuffle here. <laughs> um, so they don't have feathers on their legs to help keep their legs warm. So that cold blood gets pumped up into their body, which is kept warm under all of those fluffy feathers. And their body then recirculates warm blood back down to their legs and their feathers can warm up that cooler blood. So that's how they are able to stay out in really cold temperatures. Our flamingos can stay out as long as the real feel is above 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So they can be out in the snow. Um, we will heat their water to around 40 or 50 degrees. We also have pumps so it doesn't freeze over and they're able to be out in that water because of that counter current heat exchange. Now another feature I want to point out is where do the flamingos go? So we're gonna take a quick look, a little uh, insider zoo knowledge. So you can learn where the flamingos go on those colder days or if we're expecting a really bad storm. It might be windy, we might be expecting a lot of snowfall or ice. And so if we take a look over here, you'll notice some built-in hallways over here. So this is for our keepers to access the exhibit so they can clean and check on flamingos. But that's also a flamingo uh, hallway. So our flamingos can be kind of corralled. They'll go across this hallway, right across. This is the back of our um, aviary in our Caribbean coast exhibit and another fully covered hallway back to this brown building. And that is our flamingos indoor area. So we can bring them in if we're doing any exhibit work or if we have any storms expected. So we can make sure our flock of 48 flamingos stays nice and safe and warm here at the zoo. And if we have any questions, if anyone's watching with questions, please feel free to type them in and we can do our best to answer them. Um, but a really common question while we're kind of watching is, what do our flamingos eat here at the zoo to give them that pink coloration? So we have two over here, a male and a female, having their lunch. So our flamingos eat a pelletized food here at the zoo. It is true that organisms like shrimp and different types of almost like krill and small crustaceans will give flamingos that bright pink and orangey coloration. So here at the zoo, we don't have the ability to get tons and tons and tons of fresh shrimp shipped to us. So what we do and what a lot of zoos do is have a pelletized food. So if you have cats or dogs at home, maybe even rabbits or ferrets, those animals are also likely eating different types of pelletized food. And we have many, many different kinds here at the zoo that are all specially formulated for different species. So our flamingos will be eating a pelletized food that has all of those same organisms in it, but with a more stable shelf life. So we're able to feed them healthy and nutritious food year round and not be dependent on having live organisms like shrimp and krill. And I don't see any other questions, but I'm hoping that I've answered at least some of those frequently asked questions for you. So we want to wish everyone a really great rest of your Tuesday. Stop by the zoo sometime and say hello to our noisiest animals in person. Bye.